All right. Well, here's the planner. Some of you requested that I show them the planner, go through it a little bit, and uh, I'll uh, I'll holler out at him. He was his name is uh, Farmall. Some I think he's down in uh, northeastern Kansas, right? Kansas anyway. But I think he's he's been planting corn. He might be done already. So he's a red man. Hence the name, but he does have a green planter, so he's got that going for him at least. So this is it. This is the old 7200 uh, flex fold, I believe they call that. Eight row wide, 36 inch. Um, it was, you know, it, it wasn't that bad a shape, I didn't think. Uh, the disc openers, the True V's are all good shape yet. I haven't had that much use on them. Um, I don't know. These closing arm, wheel arms aren't all, you know, slopped out. Tires. Overall, I thought it was in decent shape. Probably a piece of junk to a lot of people, but do have a bearing to replace here yet. Uh, did replace a bearing in this closing wheel over here and screwed up in the process. Those are left-handed threads in there and I proceeded to screw it up by turning them counterclockwise with a breaker bar and then when you do that you end up cutting everything to get the closing wheel off and then buying a new Closing arm assembly. Bonehead move. Don't do that. They're left handed threads on one side and right handed on the other. Did I mention this? Here, here's a set of, uh, I think they call them sand wheels. So if anybody needs a set for an Oliver, he's fit an Oliver 70. Like, you know, a 39 or 40 Oliver 70. That's what goes on the front of one of them. Cast iron wheels. So I got some. Anyway, back to the planter. This thing had liquid fertilizer. And I thought, well, that's good. I can use, I can use that and put liquid fertilizer on. Except it was, here's the method of application for that they were using. This is a squeeze pump. They had two of them. Um, one pump would service four rows on this planter. The way the squeeze pump works is their fertilizer would come in here, be distributed through this manifold, and would get into these hoses. This is one for four rows. One row, two row, three row, four row. The way it works is these rollers, there's a roller, they, they turn in here wheel on here so it's easier to turn. You turn this and it would squeeze the fertilizer through them hoses just like, well, just like a tube of toothpaste. You put this on the back, this backing plate, and it's held on with, with these, I don't know, dog bone looking things and springs and screws and that's what them rollers push them hoses up against so that it's I mean it's just like just like emptying a tube of toothpaste. Anyway, that's what they used. When I found out this one was broke, I thought, well, I ain't gonna replace that. That's just abort squeeze pump idea. And we went a different route route. I went to an electric pump. This is a 5.3 gallon a minute pump. Um, here's the supply, this yellow hose and black hose. The supply comes in, runs through. I got a 50 mesh strainer here, goes into the pump, comes out, goes into this one here. This is a 80 mesh strainer, which I have taken off. And I also put a 
uh, valve in the bottom so I can drain it and not end up with a handful of fertilizer if I want to clean that strainer. So it goes through the pump, goes into this supply line. The supply line goes back there to that white thing with the big gauge on it. We'll walk around there quick. This three quarter inch line here comes up. Um, it's hard to see because of the glare, but it goes through all these little tubes and each one of these tubes has got a red ball in it. Hence, I suppose the name red ball, I don't know. I don't know. But this is a visual flow meter so that you can see that from the cab. As the fertilizer is flowing through here, it'll raise these balls up. And if my math is correct, um, these balls should be right in, you know, right in the middle of these sight gauges. That gives you an easy way to tell if one is plugged because the ball will be at the bottom. Or, you know, if one is higher than the other or something, maybe there's something, some restriction on some of the other ones. But anyway, goes up there, comes out the top, out all these little black, um, what is this, um, I don't remember what the size is, 3 eighths, I don't remember what size hose this is comes out this little plastic this is just like airline like on a truck for your air, air ride seat or whatever I had a lot of this hose on my floater but each one of those hoses those black hoses comes around here's one it goes into one of these two pound this is a two pound check valve um, and then down the bottom I got a orifice in there and then that's what meters it out. I'm supposed to have approximately 35 to 40 PSI in these lines going through and then once it hits the orifice that's what's gonna you know apply it evenly to all rows. So that's how that works. I got a controller that I mount in the cab for that pump that'll speed that pump up or slow it down and what that'll do is that'll change my pressure so That'll increase or decrease the pressure up here on that gauge. And once I get that dialed in to where I need it, I shouldn't have to change it. But that's how that's going to work. Uh, missing anything? Here's a lot of a lot of crap to hook up on the. This is this. You plug this in. This will make it that you can fold the planter. Without that plugged in you won't be able to fold it. This one here is the just the lights and I don't know if that also supplies power to being able to fold it. I don't know. This one here is for the monitor. Keeps track of your seed and over here I got This is the one, this is the power for the pump. This will plug in to that controller in the cab. Uh, got a pair of remotes here for the lift up and down. I've got a pair of remotes for the markers. And I've got a pair of remotes for the vacuum. This is a needle valve to adjust, fine tune the flow, you know, to your vacuum. So you can adjust exactly how you want it. That's how you control that. So, there you go. Overall, it was, it wasn't in bad shape. I don't think the guy used it before. I don't think he put fertilizer on. He ran these coulters right down the middle. I mean, the true V was going right in the same track as those coulters. See here? Your seed would have been placed right in the middle there. I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to have injury with some of you running 10, 11 gallons. You could screw up your seed with 
that much fertilizer. So I'm going to be running it off to the side and it's going to be, you know, in relation to this wheel, it's going to be placing it right about there. So off to the side. A lot of guys don't even do that. They don't even run them coulters. They say the hell with that and they just dribble it on the ground behind these closing wheels. Just dribble it there. I don't know. I got the coulters. I'm going to try it if it absolutely sucks and I hate the coulters. Maybe next year we can think about dribbling it on the ground. Some guys do it in furrow, but there you run into, you know, you're not you're kind of limited as to how much you can put there that close to the seed. So which is why I want to put it to the side. 10 gallons of an 825 5.5 NPK sulfur zinc 0.5 zinc call that triple nickel so if I put on 100 pounds of that you know you get that'd be 20 pounds of phosphorus 5 pounds of K Five of sulfur and a half of zinc. Anyway, you got to have a quick hitch to hook it up. You don't have to, but it would sure make it easy. So, there it is. That's 11 minutes. That's long enough. That's actually almost 12 minutes.